Good morning, being alive. So, guess what? I think it was yesterday or maybe the day before. I found my 2018 W2s. Now I didn't have a job in 2019, so I still learned a lot over the year about what the year holds and the calendar months and everything like that. So I'm gonna go over some of those things that I've learned, even though I haven't been really working in society or had a lot of friends, just a lot of me time. But I don't want you guys to think that I'm still not learning and progressing. So the 12, well, first thing I want to speak about, because there's three points that I have written down today. If you guys choose to continue to watch and enjoy my video, the things I'll be talking about today, first, is the 12 months, what they each individually mean to me and what I get out of them. The second is the seven weekdays, what they each individually mean to me and what I get out of them. And the third is my Hebrew studies, what it means to me and what I get out of it from the knowledge that I have now. Again, I'm a 22-year-old female. So my ideas and points might be a little bit different than others, but this is just what I get from my life if you guys want to continue to watch and learn and watch my journey with me. So we'll start here with the 12 months. Now, to my knowledge, what I know, January is the first month of the year, December is the last month. So it's 12 months. So it goes January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. And I also have them numbered 1 through 12. So if I call out a number, I'll say the month after it, and I'll tell you what it means to me. So two months, that because we'll, I'll, I'll tie it into the weekdays too. Sunday's the first day of the week, in my mind's head, and Saturday's the last day of the week. So it's 1 through 7. So it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So here in the Hebrew studies, the months and the days that I have highlighted for me, Wednesdays and Sundays, those are the days that I choose to study about the Hebrew faith. And then um, August and March. And we'll see why I feel like those are the Sabbath slash rest days of the months for us here in America. So for January is the first um, day or first month of the year. So in my mind, it wouldn't be like a Sunday, it would be more like a Monday because of course we go to school on Mondays um, for the first day. And that's what we learn is like the first day of the week as far as like the school week goes because it goes Monday through Friday and they leave off the weekends. So, I enjoy Monday. I do enjoy Monday, and I enjoy January. January is the coldest month. It's starting of a new year. It's a work month, and it's equivalent to Monday. Because, of course, every new week after the weekend, you go into school, and you're going to have to put in some work. You know, it's going to be the probably the hardest day. January is usually the hardest month because we have New Year resolutions. We want to become new people, and new things open up in new years. That's just as people as a whole, I think, on the earth, you know, even in different countries, if they don't have the same months or something, every time a new calendar, whatever period rolls by or season rolls by or whatever it is, I think the year system is the best for us in the United States. I don't think it's bad. I think it's the best because, like I said, the way that it's divided up as far as everything and then January, like I said, it's very good to you know go through a little bit of muscle burning that's basically what january is getting prepared for the rest of the month february like i said is really like this fast month or the sabbath month so when you really recollect is this what i really want to be doing am i prepared for this am i capable of doing this am i going to be able to grow doing this now i have that also for september so that's the ninth month also that's going into the last three months of the year, you know, because at the beginning of the year and the end of the year, that's when you have the most suicide rates that are in America. Not suicide rates, you know, or maybe losing a job or anything tragic. Those are probably part of the years, so the beginning of the year towards the end of the year. So those are like the Sabbath days for me, which will also be a Saturday, too. You know, it's not necessarily at a party. Sometimes it just can be in your room or at home, you know, end of a bad week. And you're just trying to see, am I prepared? Am I capable of even stepping into the next day? Am, am I the type of person that wants to do that? 
So that's for Saturday, but I also have that for Wednesday too. I'm not gonna lie. In the middle of the school school um week, that middle day after Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, you're like, do I even want to continue on? Do I even do Thursday and Friday? What type of person am I right now? Am I enjoying this? Am I not enjoying this? So on the flip flop flip side of the suicidal rate, everybody also has, you know, a killing rate or whatever the situation is where you're more detrimental to society than you are to anything. That's it. You're either detrimental to yourself or detrimental to society. You know, it's just basically like when everybody's just quote unquote the bad person. Two days out of the week, two months out of the year. You know. Uh, those are just the stages that you go through. And for me, those are the Hebrew days that I think about. You know, that's the spiritual warfare, the holy war, you know, between heaven and hell, who you are, you know, your morals, your mindset, what you stand on, what trauma you've been through, and what you're willing to go through. You know, are you willing to just show out and expose the earth right now? Or are you still trying to be humble and enjoy, you know? Or I suppose, you know, maybe your reputation, your family, whatever. What It's just whatever you try to do during these days. Or maybe try to learn to be a little bit humble and get stronger mentally in a meditation period. Maybe that's the way that you like to choose those days. That's fine. It's just up to everybody. So, and that's just basically what, whoever, whatever religion that you have. That's just how my articulation or my vocabulary defines it. But I think it would probably be the same for maybe Christianity or for um, any different religion that you might have, you know. But since I study Hebrewism, because my type of people is from the tribe of Judah, and so we study Hebrew now, that's what, you know, how I would speak to me and my son, you know, my household of where I stay and how I would just explain how I feel about life characteristics, personalities, and things of that nature and family situations. That's just my articulation. But like I said, other people have different articulations. I mean, you know, Christianity is the only one I can think of because that's somewhere that I came from. You know, that's a religion that me and my mom and my family have studied before. So it's not something that's unfamiliar to me, you know. So those are the only things that my mind really can speak on or go to because I haven't had the opportunity or, you know, haven't done, I guess, <laughs> just dropped the ball on it, of studying any other religion. So that's the third part. So basically that's it for the Hebrew studies that I was going to speak over. I know it was the third point, but I still just snatched it down to it. Let's go back to some months. Now, March is New Beginnings. I think I have New Beginnings somewhere on here also. Uh, for March and August. That was part of the Hebrew studies too that I have. Basically, New Beginnings, New Thoughts. It's the flip side or the flop side. April is the weather change, you know. It goes from being cold to the ice melts. So now it's raining, you know. It's raining a lot and... You gotta wear the rain boots outside, got the mosquitoes, the earth is freshening up. So, it just changes basically with the environment. Not necessarily with people, but the environment. So, I guess it'll, it'll just make your body feel a certain type of way. So, you have to have certain type of hygiene. It's when my mom's birthday is too. So, my cycle will probably be a little bit weird. This year, in 2019, that's when I ended up finding out I was pregnant. So next year, probably my cycle will be a little bit weird on in April or whatever. My baby will be five months by then. So, I mean, it's a weather change and it's a body change. So that kind of messes up your mentality too based off the food that you eat or, you know, the environments you want to go in, the people you want to interact with, stuff of that nature. I also have that down for June, which is my birthday also, which that's when it starts to get hot outside and when school, the kids are let out of school so it's more people in the neighborhood you know it's more stuff to do as far as swimming and stuff like that so it's when you can be the sickest you know and I feel like those are the two months that's it's most detrimental to be sick and in the United States it's on those two months so try to keep it fresh for those days um let's see after uh April which was in between June is May 
I have that as a stagnant month or confusion month. And that's just with my psyche at, you know. Maybe I'm getting too much knowledge or maybe, you know, my job is going too hard or maybe I'm getting into it with a guy friend that I have too much. That's for May and that's also for July too. And I think it's because of the holidays that we celebrate in those. See, May, we don't celebrate Cinco de Mayo. And I, it's something I always kind of been interested in or wanted to celebrate is stuff with Mexico because I know how Texas was its own country, but Mexico was its own country too. And we don't really study the Mexican culture in school or anything like that, but we do have a big Hispanic rate that's here in America. I'm not saying I want to learn Spanish, but I at least want to know y'all's culture, what y'all do, what type of people y'all are, you know, and what morals that y'all have. And so I guess I would have to study on my own, but I would rather, you know, I know it's weird because we're a black family, but even if we cook quesadillas for Cinco de Mayo, you know, try to celebrate, go out and celebrate it, I would enjoy it. So I have it as a stagnant month or a confusion month. Why? Because it's basically jealousy in my head the whole month. Now, July, stagnant month and confusion month because we're celebrating Independence Day, 4th of July. I'm not going to say that my whole life I haven't hated 4th of July. Why? We're celebrating us being free country in America. And it happened like in 1700s or something like that. We're way in the 2000s. So that was like 300 years ago. Like, why are we still celebrating that? We know we're free. Can we come up with some more stuff, you know? Popping fireworks all the time to just, I mean... It's just kind of crazy. It's just kind of crazy to me. So, starting them up for that. I put a standard day in the middle of the weekday. It's Tuesday also. The day after um, Monday, which I guess Thursday will be too, if Tuesday is. But, yeah, because it's like, you'll get the syllabus, you'll learn and everything you need to do. And then Tuesday is just basically going through the motions of everything you just learned Monday. But... It's not basically going through the motions. It's irritating. It's just how you do it. You know what I'm saying? Is it fun? Is it fun? Is it creative? Is it interesting? Or are we just, you know, you just put something together, put it on the board, and now we have to take notes or whatever. That's what I feel like for that. Now, we get August. Of course, we said new beginning. September, we said fasting month. Okay, now October, I put a daily observation. Um... Basically, that's with classwork, religion, and Halloween. So, it's just basically realizing the weekday. So, it's actually a month that I have that um, I feel like is just dedicated just to the fact that we do Sunday through Saturday. And I put that down for Thursday also. Because that's the day that, you know, based off everything you go through the week, you prepare for, you know, maybe Friday and Saturday and Sunday. And maybe the next week, whatever the situation is. It's just a daily observation of how did I go through this day and how do I want to go through the next day. It's for me time, you know what I'm saying, to try to change yourself. In October, that's basically it. That's why we do Halloween. We dress up, you know, put on different makeup or whatever. People change different religions or whatever the situation is. And even in class where you got to study because in December, you know, if you don't pass all of your finals or whatever, then you won't be able to go on winter break. You'll have to still be in school or maybe you'll fail and you'll have a bad winter break because you figure out that you don't get to graduate or whatever situation is. You don't finish the semester. Now, November is a family month. Of course, we have Thanksgiving, so it's basically just a month of just gratefulness for being on Earth. You know, everybody grateful for where they are, what they're doing, and how they're doing it. So then December is preparation day, equivalent to Friday, you know, a gear change or a year change. And then also, I guess, a gear change also. Everybody gets a year older. So it's different things that you have to do based on your age and going into the next year. It's equivalent to a Friday, like I said, here for us on Fridays for the preparation day. What do we do? We clean the house. We don't know what's going to happen through the weekend. We might have to have some people coming over. We might have a family coming from Iraq and say they need somewhere to live. They'll probably pay us $1,000 to stay with us for the weekend. Whatever the situation is, they just want to put a tent in the backyard. All right? Is our house going to be clean and fresh for when they come here? Is it going to be presentable to them? Are we going to already have food, you know, for them to eat? Because Sabbath, on Saturdays, we don't cook clean I mean, or do anything. You know, it's a rest day. So, Friday, did we have everything prepared? Did we get everything we needed from the store? Okay, so the store is closed down for the weekend or whatever situation that happens in. 
in America. Were we prepared for that? That's what we do on Friday. Same with this with, with your schoolwork at school. You're gonna have to make sure that you have your homework all the way in. All the homework, all the stuff like that, make sure that you have that in to the classroom and to, to the teachers. Why? Because Friday you wanna go out, you wanna have a good time. Make sure you already clean the house, you didn't get into it with your mom. So you can't see your guy friend and you can go out to eat, whatever the situation is, however you like to do Fridays. And then Saturday, of course, for us is a rest day or, you know, comfort day. Basically, relaxing. You know, anything that comes, let it come, you know what I'm saying? And then are we wise enough or articulate enough, you know, to be able to handle everything that will happen on a Saturday? We don't know why we have Saturday. It's the last day of the week. The last day of the week, but it happens to be, you know, the day of rest. We don't know what's going to, we might see a giant frog come knock on the door. Now we have to be able to be at a mindset in a position and not fearful or fearful enough that we, you know, we can maybe come up with, you know, a plan A, B, and C. Will you be able to do that? So those are the things that I got down for the weeks, months, and the Hebrew studies. As far as with my son, you know, these are the things that I'm going to be teaching him. Those are the first things that I well, I guess the first thing will always be heaven and hell, you know, and it will be more of in a Christian format until probably, I think, maybe second or third grade. That's when it will go more into, like, a Hebrew slang or language. And then from there forward, you know, you choose whether you want to understand my mindset or have your own mindset and be quarrelsome or be um, adjusting to basically what the household holds. You know, and then we just go forward from there in life, and I learn from you, and you learn from me. So that's basically it. But um, as far as the weeks, months, and seven days and studies, that's something that I just learned for myself also, because like I said, I am also only 22. So I'm still learning from life and the world, too. I still want to go back to school. I never graduated college, so I still want to graduate college, go to school, you know, still want to get a husband and everything like that. But this is the knowledge that I just learned just as a woman and becoming a mother of just, you know, the year, the year and the days. So basically, I have a broad spectrum of what I'm supposed to be doing, you know, now each second and moment, whether it be joy, pain or peace or love or hate, you know, whatever it is, you know, I can all line it up with, okay, well, I know that this month is this and this day is this though. So that's how my mindset has to be going into whatever I'm going to anyway. So now I can have a conversation with you based off of your uh, role because I don't have one yet. You know, I don't have a job. I don't have, you know, a role in society. So now I'm just conversating with you. What are you supposed to be doing? You know, because I know what, you know, maybe it makes me uncomfortable. Maybe I don't want to do it. Or maybe that's something I want to do, even though, you know, you might be uncomfortable with it. So you, you know, this is where I see that you're supposed to be. This is where everybody else is supposed to be with me. Because though I might be young, I mean, I'm not ignorant, though. You know, I've been here a long time. So, I mean, I've had other people that probably look like you, walk like you, talk like you in the same area. This is what they was doing. So what makes you different than them? And what is that going to put on the table for me? You know, if it's if it's nothing, then no. The answer is no. It's not it's because that's wrong to me. It don't look right. So that's basically how I'll start. How I'll start whatever situation is so there's some good points that i got continue to watch and enjoy my stories and my journeys to be live see you later beauty and love